Filmmaking can often be a game of chance. When you're an actor, it's up to you and your agents to determine which scripts that come your way have the best shot of being realised into something brilliant. You always have to ask the question, is this something you want in your filmography for the rest of your life? Very few actors put in the best performances of their career in their final moments on camera, and sadly all too often the last times we see our favourites on screen, it's in roles that are severely underneath them. In this list, we'll be looking at beloved actors whose final films were not becoming of them nor their celebrated careers, coming in as forgettable middling affairs, or in some cases, the downright bottom of the barrel. I'm Cy from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 more great actors with terrible last movie roles. Number 10. Bob Hoskins, Snow White and the Huntsman Englishman Bob Hoskins made his first waves in entertainment by starring in a slew of BBC television dramas and eventually British-made films. Gangster flicks such as 1980's Long Good Friday and 1986's Mona Lisa saw Hoskins grab several BAFTA awards described by critics and contemporaries alike as a natural. When he made the jump to Hollywood, Hoskins had a supremely strange career and hats off to him for always taking risks. After all, Who Framed Roger Rabbit must have been an extremely odd script to read, but he made the right choice to dive into it, crafting perhaps one of his most iconic roles. Then again, he also starred in Super Mario Bros., so you win some, you lose some. In 2012, Hoskins retired from acting due to an onset of Parkinson's, and the celebrated Brit would eventually pass away in 2014. This marked his role in Snow White and the Huntsman as his final on-screen appearance. As part of the film's take on the Seven Dwarves, alongside other great British actors, Hoskins is a true highlight in a film that is essentially the Twilight version of the Snow White tale. Overblown, overdramatic, and tired. Hoskins' performance, often lost in the shuffle, has a real dramatic gravitas that this run-of-the-mill dark fantasy scarcely deserves. Number 9. Patrick Swayze, Powder Blue Voted by People magazine as the sexiest man alive in 1991, Swayze was at the top of the mountain. Not just cutting a stunning profile, but he was also a versatile actor who in the years prior and since would star in many classic action flicks such as Point Break and Roadhouse, as well as romance films like Ghost and Dirty Dancing. Swayze's last ever performances before his death were part of the crime drama series The Beast, which he shot whilst going through treatment for pancreatic cancer. However, his final major motion picture role was for a rather underwhelming 2000 ensemble drama called Powder Blue. Perhaps Swayze's most underrated release is 1114, a black comedy about intersecting lives. Think of Powder Blue like 1114, but if it had absolutely no heart whatsoever. Unable to be saved by its cast, which includes Swayze, Forrest Whitaker, Lucy Kudrow, and Jessica Biel, just to name a few, Powder Blue is a loud and obnoxious chaos theory film where its many players are loosely connected by events as preposterous as the caricatures themselves. The slocky, painfully depressing tale was so bad that, despite having so many attractive names to put on the poster, the studio rightfully only gave it a limited theatrical run before throwing it in the home release bargain bin. Number 8. Joan Crawford, Trog it's been said in the past that nobody else decided to make Joan Crawford a star, Joan Crawford became a star because Joan Crawford decided to. Despite being a deeply divisive figure during her decades in Hollywood, in the early 20th century Crawford was undeniable in films such as Mildred Pierce, Sudden Fear and Our Dancing Daughters. Though having her fair share of success, Crawford continued to push the envelope. In 1970, she shocked the world by signing on to play the lead in the sci-fi horror film Trog, a movie about as good as the name suggests. Unfortunately, it would be her last, as soon after she chose to retire from acting. Dr. Brockton is an English anthropologist who discovers and intends to tame a troglodyte which she adorably nicknames Trog. In actuality, the audience can plainly see it's just a man in an ill-fitting monkey suit left over from the production of 2001 A Space Odyssey. Made on a shoestring budget, Crawford herself proudly proclaimed she provided her own wardrobe, Trog has gone down in history as an accidental B-movie with all of its campy frights and ridiculous dialogue. Director Freddie Francis even went as far as to say he regretted making the picture, saying Jones shouldn't have done it, and neither should I. Number 7. Harold Ramis, Year One Whilst not quite as accomplished as many on this list, Harold Ramis' jack-of-all-trades approach to filmmaking demonstrated his passion for entertainment. Despite his tendency to work off-camera and only play supporting roles, he became a recognisable fixture of pop culture regardless for his turn as Dr. Egon Spengler in the Ghostbusters franchise. Beyond the dry stoicism of the paranormal eliminator though, Ramis is fondly remembered for his contributions behind the scenes working as a combination of writer and director on features such as National Lampoon's Animal House, Caddyshack and of 
course Groundhog Day. Ramus' final project was the self-made Year One, a biblical comedy with a stacked cast of accomplished names like Jack Black, Michael Cera, David Cross and Hank Azaria. Regardless, the film was unsuccessful at the box office and didn't land well with critics being lambasted as bawdy, juvenile and dreary. Ramis wrote, directed, produced and even starred in the picture briefly as First Man Adam. Whilst the former sketch comedian has a strong and biblically appropriate presence, he can do very little to save a film that feels as though it never really knew what it was trying to achieve. A year later, Ramis would be diagnosed with the autoimmune disorder that would eventually take his life. Number 6. Raul Julia, Street Fighter First blazing a trail through the theatre, Raul Julia refused to drop his Puerto Rican accent which was almost unheard of at the time. He found massive success in spite of the naysayers, performing in numerous Shakespearean greats as well as playing iconic characters such as Dracula and Don Quixote. And when he came to the world of cinema, he brought that presence and penchant for theatrics with him in starring roles in Kiss of the Spider Woman, Moon Over Predator and Tequila Sunrise. Many will recognise him for his biggest blockbusters as Gomez in the Addams Family films and, of course, his final performance in the 1994 adaptation of the Street Fighter video game series. Julia had kept his stomach cancer diagnosis quiet for the three years leading up to his death, so when he arrived on set for Street Fighter he was weaker than the crew had expected. Still, Julia gave his all to play the bombastic, over-the-top warlord M. Bison. Street Fighter has gained a cult following in that so-bad-it's-good kind of way, but regardless of the overall quality of the film, Julia's commitment to the trashy villain is so much better than the movie deserves. While Street Fighter is Julia's final major motion picture, made-for-TV movie Burning Season was released posthumously and the Puerto Rican great was acknowledged with several awards for his soul-shaking performance. Number 5. Bela Lugosi – Plan 9 from Outer Space when it comes to the archetypal Dracula, there's no one more important than Bela Lugosi. After playing the role on stage in his home country of Hungary, Lugosi made it across the globe to America and became Hollywood's star vampire in 1931's Dracula. From there, he became a giant of the early days of cinematic horror, starring in classics like Young Frankenstein, The Raven and White Zombie. Unfortunately then, Lugosi's final appearance on screen is in a movie that is often regarded as the greatest turd in cinema history, Plan 9 from Outer Space. In fact, Lugosi's involvement with the picture is a huge to-do, since he died of a heart attack prior to shooting. The most famous Dracula only appeared on the poster of Plan 9 to attract attention, as Lugosi barely features in the movie for obvious reasons. When he does, it's through repurposed footage that he and director Ed Wood had shot together for other projects. Not only is some of this footage such bad quality that it should have been deemed unusable, but Lugosi's vampiric cape and cowl make little sense in a picture that is meant to be about alien invasion. It's a sad, not to mention confusing, end to a storied career. Lugosi practically defined the role of Dracula, and yet his final on-screen appearance essentially abuses his history. Number 4. Brittany Murphy – Something Wicked in 1995, teen comedy Clueless came into the public zeitgeist. It was cool, cutting edge and fashionable. It also had a fresh and exciting cast of young actors who would go on to become people to watch for the next few decades, including Alicia Silverstone, Paul Rudd and Brittany Murphy. Murphy's career was a scattershot of both styles and quality, but in her better moments she was able to show her range through both comedy and dramatics. Notable roles saw her acting alongside Eminem in 8 Mile, as part of a strong female ensemble in Girl Interrupted, and even even providing her voice to the likes of Happy Feet and Futurama. Brittany Murphy passed away under sadly disputed circumstances at the all too young age of 32, six months after filming Wrapped on her final feature film. However, Something Wicked didn't release until five years after her passing. Whilst fans were touched to see Murphy on screen once more, the film wasn't particularly interesting. Something Wicked is a psychological thriller as standard as they come, following a grieving bride-to-be after the death of her parents and the delusions that are set upon her by PTSD. Murphy portrays the protagonist psychiatrist in a very minor role, suffocated by what is an unremarkable, poorly acted and unfortunately frankly boring tale. Number 3. Gene Hackman – Welcome to Mooseport Gene Hackman has worked in film for over six decades, reinventing himself and crafting an unbelievable catalogue of hits, from The French Connection in 1971, upwards through the Superman series, to 2001's The Royal Tenenbaums. 
Hackman's unstoppable career has certainly earned the man the right to call himself prolific, and he's often regarded as one of the best actors in American history. Particularly funny considering that Hackman was named least likely to succeed in his high school yearbook and yet has left an indelible mark on cinema. In 2004, Hackman said in an interview with Larry King that he believed his acting career was over. Since that time, he's moved on to a new passion and has found success in becoming a novelist. Which unfortunately means that 2004's Welcome to Mooseport is the last on-screen appearance of the all-time great. Naturally, Hackman was praised for his performance, but it's fair to say he put far too much effort into a stinker. Sitting at a paltry 13% on Rotten Tomatoes, this Ray Romano comedy vehicle about a small-town political race was chastised for its painfully unfunny, childish sense of humour and brain-dead script. Hackman is best remembered for the likes of Unforgiven and Enemy of the State, rather than this closing chapter to his career. Number 2. Robin Williams – Absolutely Anything There was something captivating about Robin Williams' early stand-up appearances and his uncontrollable energy on stage, so it wasn't surprising that his career would lead him to TV and film. It was his sheer range and the honesty with which he performed that made Williams one of the most beloved actors of all time. He really could do it all, from surreal comedy and family fun adventures such as Flubber and Hook to serious dramatics like Goodwill Hunting and even an unnerving turn in thriller One Hour Photo. The man never slowed down either, so much so that he had four starring roles that were released after his sad passing. Night at the Museum 3, Merry Friggin' Christmas and Boulevard were all met with middling reviews, but it was the final of these four that stung the most. Absolutely Anything is a sci-fi comedy where Simon Pegg's leading man gives his dog Dennis the ability to speak. Williams does his best in this voiceover role, but the film's subpar script and low-budget production culminate in a film deserving of its 18% Rotten Tomatoes score. Thankfully, Williams has left behind a back catalogue for any occasion. You could ask a room of 50 people and they'd all have a different favourite Williams appearance. No one will ever claim absolutely anything, however. Number 1. Jack Nicholson – How Do You Know? In 2013, Jack Nicholson said that he wasn't retired, but that he was no longer interested in being in the public eye anymore. Still, in that time, he's not worked on any major production in any way, except a brief dalliance with a project with Christian Wiig, which was canned, and is largely considered to be done with his career in cinema. And what a filmography he leaves behind. One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, A Few Good Men, Batman and The Shining just to scrape the surface. Nicholson's career is so deep that it would be hard for most cinephiles to make a personal top 10 without regretfully leaving something great off the list. The Academy agrees too, as Nicholson happens to be the most nominated man in the history of the Oscars. His last performance, however, nothing to write home about, to say the least. Written and directed by James L. Brooks, How Do You Know is a 2010 romantic comedy that somehow manages to star Paul Rudd, Owen Wilson, Reese Witherspoon and Jack Nicholson and yet manages to utilise none of them to great effect. The combined salaries of these stars ballooned into a budget that How Do You Know could never hope to make back, especially since it was a bumbling two-hour rom-com with almost zero chemistry between its cast. What an unfortunate way to bow out. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below and any other great actors that you can think of that have real stinkers as their final performances. Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe and hit that notification bell. I've been Cypher Culture, and have a good week.